We will now move to the motion before the House this evening, which is, this House believes Oxbridge is failing Britain. I now look to the first speaker, the chair of the Consultative Committee, Matthew Vautry, Modern College, to open the case for the proposition. <laughs> I still remember the day that I got my acceptance letter from Oxford. Um, it was an anxious wait at school, and one of my friends who just passed his driving test did his best fashion the furious impression to get me home during lunchtime. And then, as I'm rummaging through all those you know, unwanted delivery takeout menus on the floor, I find it. A letter from Magdalen College, Oxford. Now, I noticed before I opened it that it was a small letter, um, probably only you know, one sheet, two sheets of paper. What does that mean? I'd been told that Acceptance letters tend to be thicker, you know, extra information for the lucky ones. Probably hadn't got in, had I? Yeah, I, I knew it was a long shot, you know, a white, privately educated male. Um, I, I, didn't really stand, I didn't really stand a chance. Um, so as I opened the letter, accepting my fate, Dear Mr. Vautry, I am pleased to offer you a place at Magdalen College to read law jurisprudence. Hmm. Now, I would hope that everyone here tonight had the same sense of awe that I experienced when I read something, when I read that and knew something similar. That you appreciated the incredible privilege that you just unlocked in that moment. Now, maybe not so much as me, I, I kept the letter. I was a bit weird in, in, in high school, but that's, but that's fine. Um, and, de and don't get me wrong, um, I absolutely love my time here at Oxford. Um, I would wish that on anyone here. And I'm not about to slate the Oxford, Oxford experience that you have all had here tonight as well. I mean, you know, hell, it's given me the chance to speak in this chamber where some of the most thoughtful people have spoken, some of the keenest minds, some of the not so keenest minds, shout out my college husband, Jan Bialas. Um, <laughs> but I love it with the knowledge that I'm selfish. I appreciate that the effect of Oxbridge is detrimental to a lot of people. And not just at this university, but in broader society. You are going to hear from others on my side about you know, the institutional discrimination that pervades this university. And also the frankly overwhelming lack of diversity. You know, issues that you've all heard a lot about before in the past, but still need reinforcing in events like this to carry the message home. I'm going to focus on two slightly different issues. First, that while you're here at Oxbridge, it creates a toxic environment for mental health that creeps into other areas of life. And secondly, that after university, Oxbridge perpetuates a society that is built on elitism and that neglects vast swathes of the country. But before I get onto that, it is my privilege to introduce the opposition speakers in this debate tonight. Following me, you will hear from Megan Bennett, a second year philosophy and theology student at Regent's Park and the current head of press at the Oxford Union. Now, as part of her role as head of press, she's of course in charge of dealing with the um, interactions with student newspapers, like Ox Stew and Chairwell, which I'm sure you're all aware we have a great relationship with at all times. <laughs> um, but a little less known fact is that she's also in charge of the union's social media strategy. Now, what does this mean? All those annoying Facebook invites that you get from people, all those hacks sharing stuff on your timelines and JCR pages, she's technically the boss. So please direct your anger towards her at the end of the debate only. Nevertheless, I look forward to hearing her thoughts on this topic. Speaking second is Chris Blackhurst, the former editor of The Independent and now executive director at CTF Partners. Chris spent his university years at the other place, at Trinity Hall College, and it certainly didn't fail him looking at his impressive resume. I look forward to hearing why he thinks it does not fail Britain as a whole. Next is Bill Rammel, the vice chancellor of Bedfordshire University and former minister to, um, for higher education. It was under his tenure that the first variable tuition fees were introduced at £3,000 and since then have only increased. So again, please only direct your anger towards him after the debate. <laughs> As someone who's been so involved in shaping higher education, I'm intrigued to hear what his perspective is on what makes a university successful. And then finally, we will hear from Lewis Iwu, the former director of the Fair Education Alliance and a former president of the Oxford University Students' Union. Now, I was very worried uh, when I heard that Lewis was debating tonight, because I discovered he was a former world debating champion when he was here um, at Oxford. So I probably shouldn't aggravate him too much. Then again, when a quick Google shirt search showed me the, um, the loving chairwell headline, Lewis Iwu penalised for dirty campaign tactics in Aozu race. It was too good to resist. 
Um, all I'll say, Lewis, is if a controversial election is your thing, you finally come to the right union in Oxford. <laughs> I'm now eagerly awaiting him to, to rebut everything I say tonight. Mr. President, these are your speakers and they are most welcome. <laughs> but before I continue to you know, make a fool of myself in front of you, I want to stress what this debate is about. Now, it encompasses both the university life of students and the access to that environment, and also the influence that Oxbridge has over a wider society, both as an institution and through its graduates. We must therefore assess any failure based on these requirements. Now, for the opposition, it is simply not okay to just say, oh yeah, no, Oxbridge, it's had issues with diversity, access, elitism, racism, sexism uh, in the past, but it's fine, we're changing, that's okay. That's simply not okay, because these issues have been known about for decades. The opposition must prove to you that both universities are currently not failing their students, as they will go on to impact the country later, and also that their existing influence and reach in society is not failing Britain either. This is a burden that they simply cannot shake. Now, firstly, the environments that students exist within. Does Oxbridge, uh, Oxford and Cambridge have a problem? Now, I accept all universities struggle with mental health issues um, among students. What sets Oxbridge apart for all the wrong reasons is how these issues emerge and how they are dealt with. Now, mental health, if you're more of a, a, more of a data person, the figures look pretty good. Um, Oxford and Cambridge spend almost double the amount that other universities like Edinburgh and Durham do per person on counselling services. And this doesn't even begin to include all the provision that's given by um, welfare reps within your college, you know, like force feeding you cake every other day. Um, there is, by any measure, a big focus on welfare within colleges. But why? Why is there such a big focus within college communities? It's because Oxbridge is designed to make you suffer. Yes, <laughs> yes, the tutorial system is genuinely rewarding and academically stimulating. I love being absolutely demolished by the person who wrote my textbook just as much as the next law student does. <laughs> but that system is weighed down. As you all know, Oxford and Cambridge have eight week terms. That's 24 weeks in a year. Noticeably short compared to any other universities. No wonder that people struggle to cope while they're here, that rustication is a common topic of conversation in everyday life, that is acted upon in almost every college, every term, without fail. That most people don't understand what enough sleep means in this context and think they are being, leading healthy lives. Our teams, are, our, our terms are so short and intense that we literally have the term fifth week blues. Now just stop and think about that for a minute. Within the actual setup of our educational programme, it is accepted that students are likely to feel overwhelmed and possibly depressed. Now that is a depressing fact. We have to provide incredible amounts of welfare support, going beyond most other universities, yet still the problem persists, and we just pull a rug of welfare tea every other day over it. Not only are these conditions likely to stimulate problems, they are also useless for those who already suffer before they get here and can actually be a consideration that puts people off applying. You need to remain, um, yet to remain rooted in traditional ways um, leads to a refusal to accept that the cultural experience here is both unwelcoming and actively detrimental to many. Colleges that operate off the landed wealth of a century ago continue to care more about the quality of their lawns than the quality of experience that their students get at this university. Only gradually are we seeing an acknowledgement that some, by some, that maybe there is a better way to cultivate a passion for a subject. But it is just some. Cambridge even has a day known as Suicide Sunday, the day after most people have finished exams in summer term and we are free to day drink their exams away. The name refers rather jovially to um, having not committed suicide during the past week of exams. What? How are we as a society, accepting that as a normalisation and an environment that students are subjected to as part of Oxbridge. It's so intense that suicide and excessive drinking, oh, wait, okay, let me check that a minute, um, excessive drinking to deal with stress, let's put that on the side, are par for the course. Now, this is all well and good, well, actually, it's not good at all, but so what? Why does this impact Britain as a whole? Well, simple, because what our experience is teaching us is that mental health 
is not something we should care about. Whether we have experienced issues or not, it is not important enough to merit changing our practices, but simply we will patch the problems to keep it under wraps. We accept the conditions and consequences of an Oxbridge ed education system as the norm. Everyone is meant to be sleep deprived. You're meant to find it stressful. It is supposed to be challenging to the developers as people to prepare us for the real world. It's normal. More than that, it's welcomed. We take this mentality with us into that real world, perpetuating those situations in workplace environments. But more crucially, this detrimental mindset is, seeps into the way schools and other universities think about education. Oxbridge is the gold standard. We accept that within the UK. If Oxbridge is doing it, then it is what, they should, then what, is what others should follow in order to retain the same levels of academic excellence. Now, what is the value of education if it does not help create well-rounded adults, particularly who graduate with the not understanding that it is okay for them to ask for support? Now, some of you may turn to me and say, no, university is only about learning. That's what it's for, which is you know, fair enough. But I will die on the hill that I have grown far more as a person from doing things outside of my degree. Oxbridge fails to address the social, these social problems, and as such, it is failing. Now, this leads me on to my second point, very quickly. Um, what Oxbridge perpetuates in wider society. The thing that makes Oxford and Cambridge so important within Britain is their influence, whether it be through their research, the sway they have over other academic institutions, or most importantly, through Oxford graduates going out into the wider world. It is a question of how do they, with their privilege of being taught by the best, alongside the best, Act. The opportunities we have are unparalleled, both during and after our time here. No other universities in the country provide the advantages we have, as much as Durham tries. And even the university, um, uh, sorry, and, um, and because, this is, because of this, we have a social responsibility to give back to those who are not so lucky to be here. Now, I understand that um, some people have the idea that, you know, university is about learning. But even that line of argument leads to this conclusion, because we have to do something with that knowledge. Sadly, however, this sentiment is not fostered within the two universities, unless the idea of social responsibility comes from potentially paying tax on your, on your sir? nice um, uh, job in the future. No, thank you. Um, now, of course, this is a bit of a straw man. Um, the Oxford Career Service actually highlighted the single biggest area of employment is um, education in the future, if you include all of its um, forms. But even there, Graduates will perhaps understand the leap because of the pay, gravitate towards independent schools where they will be teaching the sons and daughters of other Oxbridge profession professionals. This is not distributing the privilege that is, um, people experience at Oxbridge, no thank you, but merely enforcing what has come before. Now I mentioned earlier about my college husband um, who has already spoken in this chamber. I would not be a part of the union if he, when he was part of the union, had not suggested to the presidential candidate who went to my school to slate me in that election. <laughs> now, one lost election and three terms later, my face is now in the term card because I have played a system where it, know, it counts to know people rather than know things. Now, the privileges of Oxbridge are no longer quite like this. The stereotyped private school to Oxbridge to top job cycle is slowly, and I emphasize slowly, falling apart. But they remain far too similar. In my first term here, I was offered a visit to the office of a multinational law firm. Um, that firm had sponsored our college to provide all our first year law books for free. They also sponsored our Christmas dinner, which was a black tie. Um, at their office, I was shown around by one of four trainees at the time, all of which were from my college. Now, who knows how much money they've spent on me individually just because I went to that one college with a deer park, while they only offer a handful of other campus events on their website. Now, remember the motion. Oxbridge is failing Britain. This motion has a recognition that we need to look specifically at Oxbridge and what its effect is on the whole country. And frankly, for some parts of the UK and Britain, the worst thing is that there is little to no impact at all. Now, it's not surprising when you look at the geographical disparities in, in um, offers. You know, about a quarter of offers from both universities come from only eight local authority areas. Um, and the graduates are unlikely to, to disperse you know, to, to Wales or Newcastle. But within the confines of this motion, Oxbridge has failed geographically in extending and spelling out the, the privileges that it, receive, that it gives to students. Now, the reason these failings exist is because we fail to acknowledge them properly. Once we are here, it is all too easy to forget about those who have not made it and will never made it. Accepting that Oxbridge is failing Britain is the first step to ensuring that this does not continue. Now I ask, how do we solve these problems? 
Unfortunately, Google doesn't tell me all the answers. Um, ask Rabbi, he does PPE, he probably knows better than me. Um, but what matters is that it comes from within Oxbridge itself, from us. Now, in the past, it's been a bit of a tradition uh, when I've been public speaking to end my speeches and um, quoting the American rapper Naz. Now, don't ask me why, as I said, high school Matthew, bit of a weird kid. Um, and unsurprisingly, his songs don't really contain that many lyrics relating to the university system in the UK. However, themes of change are not too hard to find. So, in the immortal words of Naz, taken from the 2001 What Goes Around, every dog has its day and everything flips around. Even the most greatest nation in the world has it coming back to him. Now, I'm not sure how grammatically correct that last lyric was, but I do sincerely hope that Oxbridge, as I've spoken about it tonight, has had its day. Thank you very much.